burn it down. Right. That. That's actually funny. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so, welcome to the Post Up on Five R, uh, aka the Five Reasons Sports Post Game Show. I'm your host, Roy A. Shepard. Uh, I'm joined today by Flying. <laughs> uh, trade the kids one, trade the kids two, trade the kids three, and our guy. What is this? Cambio, Cambio los niños. Cambia los niños. That means oh. trade the kids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we, we could have done it in different languages, really. Oh, you I yeah, had that let's option. Just, let's, let, let's make this thing multilingual, oh. Ricky. I know you got us in French. Uh, I can do it in French, I can do it in Hebrew. Oh, yeah, get it in Hebrew then. Uh, not the keyboard though. Oh, somebody needs Afrikaans in here too, so that we can make sure that we made this thing all the way right. So, <laughs> uh, very depressing game. Like, the, the final score is not indicative of what this game was. So, the Heat lost 110 to 97. To honestly, one of the better teams in the league, uh, Phoenix Suns are a good team. And I want to make sure that I acknowledge that before we do what is inevitable here. <laughs> um, because, as you've noticed, everybody, everybody here is ready. And I think even Ethan was ready tonight to accept the fact that this team needs to make a move. If this game, if, if, if it was never more apparent, I believe this game showed us tonight that we just don't have enough. So I'm going to start with my man. Ariel, I'll start with you tonight, Ariel. You go ahead and give me uh, your thoughts tonight on this shit show. Okay, so most of my analysis is only going to speak to the first two and a half quarters because over uh, the final quarter and a half of the game, I was playing with the trade machine on uh, on ESPN. So cut me some slack on that. But no, seriously, though, I mean, I just – look, this is a tough spot for them to get a win in. They're playing one of the best teams in the league. Uh, the trade rumors are flying, and, you know, some of us have speculated that that might – Ha- play a part in some of the heat struggles but if we're being honest this has been the case all year this has been their offense all year when jimmy doesn't go ballistic and absolutely carry the team this is what it looks like um i thought phoenix all around just out executed the heat um uh, they were moving the ball really re- really well and continuously finding the weak spots in miami's defense um it kind of feels like the heat have to play their a game to even have a chance and the Suns were just taking advantage of every single lapse, and they executed at a really high level. So um, it's a shit show. It's hard to watch. Uh, again, tough game to get a win, but it doesn't really make it much better given that it's the fourth straight loss, and now the Heat, over their last four games, are shooting 40% from the field and 27% from three. That's a huge, huge problem. They cannot score the basketball. Absolutely. So, Brian, what did you see tonight, my man? I saw a team that needs to be put out of its misery. <laughs> Just quite frankly, um, yeah, like Ariel said, I mean, the Suns are a good team. It's not like the it's not like the Heat were playing, you know, the Timberwolves or something like that. But at, at the same time, there was so much that we've talked about all year. You know, uh, DeAndre Ayton destroying smaller guys on switches. Chris Paul taking whoever he was guarding to task. Uh, Devin Booker doing the same, right? Uh, you know, the Suns finding guys in the corners and then knocking down open threes. Our supposed shooters missing open threes. What was Tyler Hero tonight? And what was Duncan Robinson? Let's just take a, a quick look at that. Uh, uh, so Duncan, Duncan Robinson was two for six, two for five from the three. Tyler Hero um, was one of, six. 11, one of six from three. One of six from three. And Kelly, Olen- Kelly Olenek, oh, four from three. Listen, <laughs> I, you you can't win games like that. This I've said this before. This isn't the '90s. You know, you have to you have to be able to score. And if you're three guys that you know you rely on so much for offense uh, from the outside, can't get it going, then you're kind of dead in the water. Unless you have an MVP performance from Jimmy Butler, and you can't ask that guy to do that every single game. So it's really just more of the same. So I want to acknowledge the $5 donation from Dan, the film gent. He said, well, I got to say that was quite a performance by some of these players that just played their final game here in Miami. I mean, mm. some of them who you might be expecting to be gone. It, I mean, look, I just want to, I just want to caution people to break some news for us. 
Uh, the Heat might not make the trades that y'all think they're going to make, so y'all need to temper y'all expectations. Uh, mm-hmm. They've been known not to do that. I uh, also want to thank Abdel for the four ninety nine donation. He said, James Jones, Heat legend, constructed a, t- a damn good team in Phoenix. Glad to see what this roster looks like next week. Yeah, him and Monty Williams are doing a bang-up job over there in Phoenix, and that team is really good, but, you know, we can talk about Phoenix on a Phoenix stream one day. Um, Simba, let me uh, let me know what you thought about the, t- the game today. Um, we just look like shit, man. And <laughs> like, what, like, let's be honest, we can't shoot for shit. Um, our players suck right now. Uh, I hope the office doesn't think that this is a shooting slump because it is not. <laughs> it's like <laughs> this fucking team just can't. We just can't shoot. Like for real, we just honestly just can't shoot. Can't shoot to save our lives. Um, Tyler Hero is not a bucket right now. Uh, he's more of a brick, uh, more than anything. Um. And, and I think you see it, right? Like, everybody's screaming at each other right now. It doesn't look like it's fun anymore. Um, yeah, man, trade the kids. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's – it doesn't look fun for them, but it's less fun to watch, like, on a consistent basis. Like, this team can't generate respectable offense. So what <laughs> What you're saying is – I, I missed the rest of the comment. Put it back They're not good. Now. Oh, I mean – no, <laughs> they're not good yet. <laughs> okay, and I don't think we have time to wait for them to become good, which is becoming my my point over the last. So I want to thank Music Man for the one ninety nine. Don't know. He said K None needs help absolutely because he was the only person out there playing tonight. Uh, Gad, I got a two part question for you. One, was that Granny's flan that we were uh, looking at just then? Yes, uh, I well I made flan on Saturday and I had leftovers, so mm. I was like, you know what, that's better than the game tonight. So fuck it, why not? So okay. you saved that just for today's show? Do you think I saved flan? I would never I would never <laughs> yeah, like give you one of piece of flan. flan. <laughs> you, no, guys are lucky. you guys are lucky that my grandma made enough of this shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, you saved it. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I got more in the fridge, too. <laughs> so, come on. If you think anybody's grandma just gave them enough for one serving, then I mean... <laughs> 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 nah, <laughs> Not nobody, enough. nobody south of the U.S. border has a grandmother or an abuela or grandmère or whatever where it's like if you haven't eaten they're not going to freak out you oh. you've all seen that meme yeah, um, yes it is. yes indeed yes yeah. indeed so gad the second part of your question is uh tell me what you thought about this clusterfuck of a basketball game tonight clusterfuck of a pla- of a basketball game i mean kelly olenic did what kelly olenic does what do you go oh seven from the field i think um yeah you know it, it was it was just trash oh oh six mhm my bad. I didn't mean to disrespect him like that. Um, <laughs> Never again. But <laughs> no, it was trash. And the energy was terrible. We, uh, Bam and Jimmy, we just were not able to kind of get the ball in the basket tonight. And when that doesn't happen, this team is legitimately probably the worst team in the NBA. Uh, the point of attack defense is really, really bad. You know, I'm just hoping that this is kind of what finally pushes them to really shake things up. And we'll see where we go from there. I don't know what the future holds for this team, but it is not good the way things currently stand. Uh, so I want to thank Mark M for the two dollar donation. He said Gas Flans defense is better than fourteen fifty five and nine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, also want to thank R Bra for the one ninety nine donation. He said, "Would you do none Precious and Duncan Robinson for Lowry?" Yes. 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 Uh, Christian Cardis one ninety nine. Don't know. He said, "As Latinos, I don't like how Royal said Flan." I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I will take some. Do better, Royal. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, uh, I, I, I got plenty of advisors here that can help me. Royal, none, Royal doesn't none, pander. No question. None. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't. like. But, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to respect cultural lines, you know. If there's a proper way to say it, then I'll do my best to say it. If I can't say it, then to hell with it. Ricky, my man. Yes, sir. Give us some perspective on tonight's game. Well, okay. So, as I've been saying for a while, the Heat are a mediocre team. Uh, I remember when – a lot of people thought it was a bit when I said that the Heat are no better than fifth at best in the Eastern Conference. Did we even play like an eighth seeded team tonight? I don't think so. The Suns no. are a good the, the Suns are a legitimately good team. They are second in the West, the Western Conference. And I gotta say, and I know this isn't the Suns stream, but for all the talk that we've tr- we've been trying to drum up for Jim VP, I think we need to give some respect to the point guard. Because they brought him in, and look at what they look at what they're doing this season. Look at what he did last season with the remnants of what Russell Westbrook was dealing with. 
in OKC. He got to within one referee call from uh, the second round. All right, no more no more Suns talk. I'm done. But here's the thing. I'm, I, I don't want to risk repeating myself too much, but I'm just going to bring up this one stat and then I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to pass the rock. OK, 16 points, eight rebounds, six assists. The Heat lost realistically by 20 points, four for nine from the field, eight for nine from the line. The fourth most field goal attempts on this team. If I told you that arguably the highest paid player on this team next season got those numbers tonight, would you feel happy? Would you feel concerned? Or would you be concerned about whether or not there was an injury? That's a good point. I mean, I'd probably be legitimately concerned. Well, that was Bam Adebayo tonight. And I'm not expecting for us to turn this into a Bam thing, but uh, uh, DeAndre Ayton doesn't play defense. At all. At all. And I think that's a, I think that's a brilliant point. Let's talk about DeAndre Ayton or something or the defense that led to what DeAndre Ayton was doing to us. Um thank you, Christian Cardis, for the 199 donation. He said we got a super team, Max Curry, Gabe Allen, and K Bird. Boy stop. Uh <laughs> so so um Ariel, I, I want to throw this to you about the defense. So we've been playing this switching defense for quite a while, and we saw early on in the game the Suns repeatedly abused it. The point guard was making a way to get that ball into Aiden every single possession that he got a smaller guy switched on him. And and granted, at the time, it seemed like the most frustrating thing about the defense. And then I saw a possession where Bam did not switch, stayed attached to his man, and Kendrick Nunn got absolutely blown by for a wide-open layup by Cameron Payne. So talk about the defense tonight, and is there any way if we don't make a trade for this team to fix it? The defense has been pretty good all year, so I don't know if I – I feel like, you know, you can get taken advantage of when you switch all the time. So to me, it comes down to you just need to be smarter on selecting when to switch. So, for example, Bam doesn't have to switch out on Chris Paul every single time because what happens when he does that is while it might be favorable for the heat on the perimeter down low Kendrick Nunn or Jimmy Butler or whoever it is is switched on to the other team's center and that's usually while Jimmy is a phenomenal defender that's usually going to be a mismatch and a bucket for the other team so I don't know if there's if there's really an answer here unless you can get when in the trade market, if you can get better defenders, specifically at the guard position to where you don't have to switch on the perimeter every single time, you can survive that a little bit better. But it's 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 a schematic thing. When they play the drop, they give up the mid-range jumper and they give up, you know, the three-point shot when they collapse in the paint. If they play the zone, you know, teams will get into the middle of the zone, spray to the perimeter, you give up threes. Like there's gonna be a hole in every defense. So Overall, they've been a good defensive team. I'm not going to trash their defense. That's not really where the issues lie with this team. They can't score the basketball, and they cannot make threes. They are one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league. They're down from 38% on three-point field goals last season at second in the NBA to somewhere in the bottom five or six this year at 34%. That is where this team's issues lie. Okay. Brian, do you agree with Aaron? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think that these last three games, maybe the defense has looked more shaky, but overall it's been it's been good. There are obviously spots where it could be better, you know, especially if you're looking at the guard rotation. But given the personnel, I don't know that much is going to change, uh, assuming they don't make a trade. I think that you just kind of have to be smarter, you know, about when you're going to switch. And, you know, outside of that, there isn't really much that you can do. Okay. So, guys, I mean, I talked about one play because I have to pass the rock to people to talk. Like, <laughs> I saw Tyler Hero, bro. I I know what people are going to say about Tyler. I know everything that's going to be said on this post-game show. You, I'm just going to – because I sat there and watched it. Like, I know what, what I'm asking. But, I mean, I'm giving people the opportunity to tell me what they saw because maybe they can enlighten me a little bit. Well, it was uh, the point got on here. He just lobs it up to us and we throw it down. I'm Chris Paul, You know – yeah, yeah, you know this is the, you know this is why Charles Charles Barkley has always said I'm never going to get on social media because uh, as he's far old. as he's concerned, not just that, but as far as he's concerned, the fans are idiots, and that's not necessarily what I'm saying. But Royal says one thing, and all of a sudden, ah, it's like, dude, come on, come on. <laughs> it, it happens, man. Right. I mean, most of us got it better than Clutch this week because you know, you know anything he says or tweets, like 
That's seen as the gospel. So uh, we yeah. talked about defense. Uh, I'll pass to the last three of you for offense. Uh, Simba, we'll start with you. Uh, offense, it has been jack shit. <laughs> so give me your thoughts on the offense, brother. Um, I think the only person that kind of looked decent was uh, Kendrick Nunn. Um, he looked better shooting. I don't think he hit the, the front of the rim as much, so I think uh, they won't have to replace it today. Um, but other than that, I mean, everybody looks bad. They're getting good looks. I think that's the most infuriating part is that they're getting the looks that they want, and Duncan is getting wide open looks. Um, it's not like... He had some like amazing shots last year. It was like, holy crap, look at like the defense is all over him. And it's not even the problem anymore. Maybe we should like make it harder for him. I don't know if that would work out for him. Um, Tyler Hero, now he's like second guessing all of his shots. Uh, you can see it. Sometimes he just stops and stares and stops and stares. So offensively, I mean, it, it's not even like. I don't even know if we could change it up by schematically changing anything. I think it's unfortunately we're at a point where it's like we got to get rid of players and bring in new players. I don't think that there's any way that we can change it to make it better. I honestly don't. Okay, so we want to thank Brian Drake for the five dollar donation. He said Bam is a legit four. Sign Boogie and give Cavs a second for Javel. I mean, I'm I'm willing to entertain most ideas at this point. Just being perfectly honest with you, like I have to sit down and think about uh, something like that. Because I like Bam as a five. Like, I believe Bam can play center in this league. But I do believe that there are certain centers, like certain centers with size, they do give him problems. They give him fits on both sides of the ball. So I want to thank Joshua Garcia for the $4.99 donation. I mean, your comment. That's, yeah, that's is, about I don't know if you're going to thank you for that. Yeah, like, I, I thank you for the money, but the comment is outrageous. Fire nah, he's being sarcastic. That's what oh, the, okay. the, the, the... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, okay. You, okay. I see. Right. you had me worried there for a minute, Joshua. I just want to make sure... <laughs> Uh, Gad, I'm going to throw this to you and your guy HM just commented, so you read the comment and then tell me about the offense. HM, I hope you're having a good night. <laughs> if there are no trades made tomorrow, let's just say it will be bad. Teams don't even trap Duncan anymore. They just watch him miss. Yeah, there was one uh, shot where he got a wide open corner three, and the Suns just stood there and watched it. They're like, you know what? Fuck it. This guy's trash. And he <laughs> bricked it uh, to no one's surprise because he's just not able to make a three recently. And a lot of them are unfortunate. They're going in and out, whatever. But you, you, you're living and dying by the three when, at this point, we have enough of a sample size for it to be proven that you are trash from the three. So you are willingly going into every single game with your game plan being, I'm going to take a shot that I am trash at, and I'm going to try to win. This is not a winning formula. It's not – you're not going to win games that way. Um I was hoping they were going to go through Bam more offensively tonight, but he did not have it. It looked like Aiden had him seeing ghosts when he got the ball in the paint. Um, Kendrick Nunn was really the only guy that was able to be confident, and I want to give him credit because through all the trade rumors and whatever, the one game where you're like – a lot of people going into this game, they must have been thinking, oh, this could be my last game in Miami. I want to show out. Uh, Duncan didn't do that. God knows what Kelly did on the floor. Tyler Hero was obviously garbage. And Kendrick Nunn actually showed up, so I want to give him his props. Um, and you know how I've been trashing Duncan with that stat, how he's been ridiculously inefficient in a lot of games from three, about 37% of his games? Tyler Hero actually has had 13 or 14 of his 32 games be under 30% from three. So 44% of the time, he is legitimate garbage from, from the perimeter. Just wanted to point that out. Okay. Well, to thank SRT Dre for the 199. Don't know. He said, rest Bam next game, see what happens. The next game is going to come after the trade deadline. So we're going to see what happens before that game. Um, so, Ricky, you got two yes, offense, sir. two defense. I kind of like the analogy when they said that you like to go ISO. So I'm going to let you go ISO and you make the decision on what you're going to talk about offense or defense. Which do you believe is the biggest problem for this team at the present time? Well, hashtag heat culture has always been about defense since Pat Riley came here in 1995. The defense was never the problem. The defense was never the problem when the big three came together. It was the mm -hmm. offense that was the issue. It was the offense that, that took them an entire season to figure out. This team, as we've been, as all of us, not just me, have been saying all season, we are overly reliant on, I think, three plays. The one play, Jimmy Iso. Play number two, yeah. bam, dribble, handoff. Uh, play number three, Pray to God, Hero gets some drip and scores some miracle swaggy three. <laughs> That's basically the Heat offense right now. If you take away Duncan Robinson, Bam oh is not at the point in his Bam is not at the point in his career where he's going to attack the basket and be aggressive. So no one's worried about him. 
No one's worried about Bam shooting the Heat out of a game. Jimmy, as a this is one thing I'll 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 bring up again. Jimmy has had to average a triple double almost just so this team can have a chance, and he's been doing that since he's been back. And I've been saying this since the start of the season. That is not going to be. It's not sustainable for a guy his age and his mileage for the whole year. The injuries are going to pile up. Okay, and here we are. We need offense. We need more than just a. We can't rely on a one-dimensional shooter to carry us to victories every night. We're not the 05 Duke team. Was it? Was that 05 Duke that had JJ Redick on it? I think uh, it was J- them. JJ Redick was. Oh, oh, 05 Duke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jason Red was the best player in the country at the time. Like, no, well, yeah, crazy. but he was a nightmare. <laughs> Coming off screens, making just about bro. everything. You take that away, and you have a more athletic team. You're you're set. And I'll just say one last, and then the shot clock's about to expire on me. Um, here's the thing. I I, I noticed something that I, I don't think any any of us have brought up just yet. It's that. We have a very serious athleticism deficit on this team. Yes. If you look at the if you look at the starting lineup, you have Bam Adebayo who doesn't always use his athleticism to begin with. You have Jimmy Butler who's a legitimate athlete, but a lot of that is hard work and effort. So it looks a, a lot of times it looks a lot more athletic than he may or may not be. And then you have Kelly Olynyk, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson and Kendrick Nunn who I think I'm I'm the same height as. There's only so much Kendrick Nunn will give you at that size. So, athletic, athletically, off the bench, Precious, okay. Gabe, no. Andre, 37. Trevor Ariza, I think early 30s now. Udonis 35. Haslam hasn't 35. Udonis Haslam, LOL. Goran Dragic, 35. Avery Bradley, injured the whole season. Casey Okpala, didn't even play tonight. Mo Harkless, <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Silva, if he... The Heat are three and five in games. He's played more than four minutes. <laughs> this team has no athletes. None. Oh. I mean, if you can't score and you're not athletic, what's all that defense going to result in? Andre Iguodala might really be a top three athlete on this team right now. <laughs> he might be. <laughs> <laughs> so Christian Carter, thank you for the 199. Don't know. He said, never want to hear Crotty say pitch a 10 again. <laughs> there are certain things I never want to hear Crotty say again, oh. but – and, the, and, and this team has no point guard there. That's another thing. <laughs> yeah, they that's were saying also, all night. They might <laughs> real soon, though. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight mm-hmm. was just an overall ass-kicking situation. Shout out to the man, Crowdy. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I usually spoon-feed you guys, like, players that I want you to talk about specifically. Tonight, I'm going to let you do your own thing. Everybody gets an ISO. Ariel, you pick a player, good or bad, that you want to talk about, and you talk about him, bro. I'm going to go with Kendrick Nunn. I thought he had a really good game. Um He's been, you know, struggling a little bit recently. I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but his points per game, field goal percentage, all of that had been had reflected the, his poor play over the last, I don't know, few weeks or so. Um, but he had 25 points tonight. He shot 10 of 19 from the field. Uh, it's good to see him get his trade value up in advance of, of the trade deadline um, because I fully, I don't know if I expect him to be gone, but I really, really hope that he's part of it because I think this team needs an absolute shakeup. But as for tonight, he played well. It's good to see. Um, that's all I've got on Kendrick Nunn. It's hard to take away too many positives from this game, to be honest with you. Thank you, Kendrick Nunn, for your two years of of service. Good luck in Toronto. Uh, SRT Dre, thank you for the one ninety nine. Don't know. He said Raptors want hero <laughs> deal or no deal. <laughs> It's called posturing. <laughs> You're right. That's what it is. It's called Toronto wanted to get more out of this deal than they're going to get from Miami, but it's inevitable. If the deal is being made, we already heard rumors about Kyle Lowry saying the only thing he wants is a guarantee that the uh, team that gets him is going to extend him for two years, $50 million. God damn it, we are going to do that. That's that's it. So Smoke they're just $50 million a year. Uh, yeah, I don't care what he got. What are we paying? <laughs> hey, so, look, at what, look at what they gave Iggy. <laughs> Look at what they gave Iggy for doing what? I mean, they're going to give him the money. He's been our third best player over the last month. Third <laughs> best player. Let me look up Iggy's numbers. Oh, he shot yeah. Why 40%, you got 40% from three for 15 games. Okay, Only got yeah, four points, that. four rebounds, and two assists in 17 minutes. That's look by at his far our third best player. <laughs> That's a bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's a horrific thing. Yeah, Brian. Nice thing. <laughs> Brian. I so. All right, uh, I'm going to take uh, Kelly Olenek. I just want to ask him one question. 
what the fuck, man? You look like <laughs> Kelly Bird next to KZ Okpala. <laughs> but you got Bam out of bio next to you. <laughs> he scores zero points. He has seven rebounds, though. Got to give a prop for that. 14 minutes because he can't, he can't play against Mikael Bridges. Like, bro, I, I don't understand. I have so many questions. We're like... calling him K Zero going forward. <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't get it. Like, and this is the problem, right? Kelly's gonna get out. He, he's gonna get played off the court in the playoffs. He's gonna go small. Kelly's not gonna make his open threes. He's gonna play pretty decent team defense, but outside of that, eh, it's just it's extremely. It's it's not even disappointing. It's disappointing. It's just kind of like infuriating, like how hot and cold this guy can be. I just, I literally don't understand. He is he is an enigma to the highest degree. This is yeah, just no. Nah. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the rotation a little bit. Uh since your guy HM don't know it again, Gat, you got the don't know and you got the ISO. Okay, where's where's this don't know? My screen is going ridiculously slow right now. <laughs> okay. Um I'll read the don't know for you. Oh, there oh and I'll read it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. My pipe dream is Lowry and Ananobi, a top 10 point guard and a great defensive wing shooting 40% from three on 5.4 attempts. Listen, I would love OG Ananobi. I just don't think it's possible. He's one of the actual building blocks for the Raptors. Norman Powell, though, is a different conversation, mm-hmm. which I will send any and every Miami Heat player for. Because he's nice. Not named Jimmy and Bam, of course. Obviously. Like, those are the two. Pl- okay, I misspoke. I'm not sending I Jimmy I said that Bam tonight and someone jumped on me on Twitter, so we got to be careful out here. <laughs> yeah, um, so. yeah, I mean, I would love OG, but that's not going to happen. Anyways, who do I want to talk about tonight? Let's see. Let's look at this box score. Um, Hold on. Clutch is calling my phone, so you go ahead. Let's see. We got <laughs> – did we talk about Hero yet? Nope. You good. Listen. Tyler Here we go. Hero. It is just – where he's fallen to as a three-point shooter is just unbelievable. One of six from three again tonight, which is objectively speaking a good game for him relative to some of the other games that he's had from three this season. Um, just terrible defensively. I mean, him and Precious Achua actually in that third quarter, they were just getting toyed with by Chris Paul and, and Devin Booker. It was absolutely hysterical to watch. Like you saw two truly great players going against two truly awful, awful defenders, at least on the perimeter. Um Dude, Hero was trash, and he's been trash. He's been playing really, really poorly, and I've been trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because, you know, he had some great moments. I watched his bubble highlights last night, and I was like, you know what? Maybe, like, maybe he can get back to this eventually. Um, <laughs> No, sir. No, sir. We're looking at an unathletic Ter- Terrence Ross right now and without the shot making, so I don't know what that makes him. Um, I would love to see Max Drews get more minutes. That's all I'm going to say. I would like to add on to the hero thing real quick. Right. If you look up his numbers, they are incredibly comparable to second year Dion Waiters. <laughs> That's what and I they're said. Only on the year last... part. <laughs> That's what I said. He might really be Dion Waiters, y'all. But yeah. I don't think most of Heat Twitter's ready for that conversation. Dion Waiters it, was tough... much more athletic than him, dude. Like <laughs> much... exactly. Right. That, that's what I'm saying. Too. Which is which is scary. The Dion fact, Waiters yeah. can also ISO and get get his own shot like at will. That seven right. and eleven time was a real thing out here, bro. Yeah. Uh, so. Simba, where you want the ball, bro? You wanted at the three on the elbow and the post. Um, I get at the three. I think I, I think the boy feeling good. I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I so simple. Um, I guess I want to thank Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero for their career here in the Miami Heat. It was fun having you. Um, unfortunately, it looks like one of you's got to go. Uh, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. And um, thanks for everything you did, guys. You know, but unfortunately, <laughs> you you are the weakest link. Um, <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. So I want to thank the guy SRT Dre for the one ninety nine. Don't know. He said hero been trash since he moved in the IG model. Come on now, let's be nice to Katia or whatever her name is. Yeah, let's, we don't we don't know what's going on. Let's yeah, not do we, that. I don't think I don't think that's the issue. I think he's been I, trash since that fucking Jack Harlow song came out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just that it's goddamn just, smirk. It was <laughs> all the promotions that got to Tyler. He had the he had the song. He had the Tyler Hero Bowl yeah. or the O's. He had the yeah, Chipotle. You know the new Chipotle thing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's just going. It's too much. It's I'm too with much. Ricky. It's the Syria, bro. It's definitely the Syria. <laughs> uh, Eugene Bebo, thank you for the 4.99 donation. Oladipo, DeRozan, or Lowry? What's your pick? I say Aldrich comes here if he's bought out. I mean. Listen, we have a trade deadline special on Thursday, Ariel. Don't you dare open your mouth. Uh, we have a trade deadline special on Thursday. We're going to keep the focus on this game tonight, which is, means it's going to be very short because I'm tired of talking about it already. Um, <laughs> everybody got a chance to ISO? Okay, let's give it to the number one option. Ricky! What are we talking about now? Just Whatever in player, anything in general? Just pick, just pick a player. Light it up, Ricky. Yeah, 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 mm. This is your monologue. Wait, first of all, read the don't know from Brian Robinson for me, please. Why the asterisk, 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 asterisk <laughs> is Tyler untouchable? Explain. Well, here's the thing. I, as far as I'm concerned, if your name is not Bam Adebayo or uh, Jimmy Butler, you are not untouchable. I'll trade anybody. Okay. The problem is at this point, if you have been loyal viewers of Five Reason Sports here on this YouTube channel, following us on the network and everything like that. We've been tra- we've been killing a lot of these guys all season, and other teams watch our games too. So I'm just wondering, who would want these guys? Okay, because I th- I saw I saw a comment earlier that that mentioned um, I don't know something like I don't see I don't even remember anymore. All I know <laughs> is that these these players are who they are. Oh, the Harden trade. Yes, the Harden trade. Like here's the thing. I I was against the Harden trade because I don't like Harden for this team. But don't think for one second that if he puts on a Heat uniform and <laughs> is there a tip, I'm going to get over it within the first five seconds of the game. The first just 30 compare- ball. Yeah, like just, <laughs> first just, ball just consider. Yeah, just consider what Brooklyn had to give up to get him and compare it to what Miami currently has on its on the roster right now. You really think we were getting James Harden? I don't I don't see it. I, I don't know. I, I think that's a tough one, Ricky. Like, I think it was just like a, the timing of when the window was up. I think we had a window. and It was a very small window in which we could cobble up the best package that we wanted to. These guys were values at an all-time high. I think we could have had – we had a window and we missed it, and then Brooklyn came in and made an offer that we couldn't do. I don't know if you were finished with your point. If you weren't, then read Yeah, no, you – Oh, um, a team with no off with no off season has no legs. That's crazy. Okay, so this was something that I was saying at the beginning of the season, but here's the thing: I don't believe in freaking out ten games into a season. But, but if it's almost April and you've seen what this team can do fully healthy, and then one guy sits down or one guy comes back and you're trash again, make a move. I mean, now you can be concerned. The deadline is this week. Yeah. So, that's, uh, I don't know what Clutch is uh and about, but if you want to come in here, then you better hurry up because I'm going it's to probably some Harden related. The sub is something he makes. He gonna make a point. But Christian Cardis, thank you for the four ninety nine. Don't know. He said Tyler perform uh, performed best when he met Katya. <laughs> I'm not reading the rest of this, except for Pat and Jimmy in the tent <laughs> pitching situations waiting for Kyle Lowry. I'm, you oh, almost man. caught me, Christian. <laughs> you almost got me, bro. I think y'all know my problem when it comes to just reading comments without, like, you don't do this to me, guys. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. Anybody else got anything that they want to talk about? Because I'm honestly, anything related to the game. Oh. Um, <laughs> Kill it with fire. Yeah, yeah. I, already, I saw your mouth perching to talk about Thursday. You guys will be there Thursday, too, uh, during the latter part of the trade deadline special. I, I want, I'm suspending all trade talk <laughs> until <laughs> after that. We're not talking about trades. I don't want to talk about Lowry. I don't want to talk about none of that. I want to talk about tonight's game. And if there's nothing else, then we're going to start paying some deals. Can, Can we talk like about – uh, let's talk about Precious, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> next is Struis. He played the least minutes, right? <laughs> oh, those, yeah, hands are, those hands are awful. Like, it, it's <laughs> funny because, like, to the – it wasn't so noticeably bad to the point when Ethan said it. But once he said it, it is like this dude legitimately just lost both hands. <laughs> both. And it has been crazy to watch. It's honestly unbelievable. Um, why didn't we play Chris Silva tonight? Because he's Chris Silva. There's an answer, <laughs> but we probably can't refer to it because Royal doesn't want to talk trades. Right. Well, because the Heat are three and five in games, he plays more than four minutes. I actually went and looked at <laughs> we that. Look at that, 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 that 
We got so a little bit of pressure. In games where he plays like double digit minutes, I can imagine our record is not very good. Uh, so Robert Nolan said, "Precious, not bad." Okay, You're right? He's terrible. <laughs> Look, we okay. watched the same game, Robert. So here's here's what I will say: Is that clutch, Manny? I don't know. You show your face. <laughs> but um, here's, here's 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 my thing on the players now, and you know, what I mean, we're not going to get into details, but the whole trade, the kids thing. I guess we we're going to address it. Here's uh, here's my thing about them. They can develop into better players down the line. The problem is that we can't afford to wait on their timeline. Like, we have Jimmy Butler now. We need to try and win now. And I think that's the long and short of it. It's nothing personal against any of the players. It's just what's necessary to win. So uh, everybody in here seems to be shaking their head. Brian, you usually the contrarian sometimes. Are you Are you with it? Uh, I mean, I I honestly don't even necessarily believe in these the ceiling of these guys. I've always said Tyler Hero is like – a six man of the year candidate at his best. So I feel like if you can trade him for a, a Kyle Lowry, you know, I mean, assuming you get like a power, whatever other much better player, you <laughs> absolutely do that. Like that's trading a shit asset for a good asset. It just makes sense. So I'm, uh, yeah, I don't care. There's going to be is. more guys that they can develop. They're going to have more draft picks and, un- and undrafted players. Like it, they'll be fine. Yeah, look at the look at the Brooklyn Nets, for example. One of the reasons why I wasn't really too enthused about the Harden trade to begin with was because when you look at how deep that team was before the Harden trade, they, they had it. young yeah, they had young guys on that team that when you surround them, when you surround uh, KD uh and uh oh jeez, wow, and Kyrie. KD and Kyrie, yeah, KD and Kyrie with those guys, it's like, whoa, this team could legitimately win like 55 to 60 wins just as they're built. And that doesn't even count uh, Spencer Dinwiddie before he, you know, he got hurt. So you had Spencer Dinwiddie, Jen, Jared Allen. You had a bunch of guys off the bench. These are young guys that can help the players that are already on the team win games. Miami, I mean, if you look at Tyler Hero heading into this season, if he were to pick off, pick up where he left off from last season, I don't think we'd be talking about Tyler Hero trade him, but blah, 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 because he'd be averaging like 17, five and whatever. And we wouldn't care because you'd have your young piece next, your two young pieces, Tyler and Bam next to Jimmy. Let's go roll the ball out. Let's play. But unfortunately, what's happened is the guys that really shown last season may or may not have already hit their ceilings. And that's a problem because for this team, if you don't project to be the kind of player that can seriously uh, help or lead a championship team, you're going to get moved for someone that will. Like I said before, Karan Butler and Lamar Odom got traded for Shaq, leaving you know right after, right after uh, Wade had that star season. So, hey, it is what it is. Oh yeah, you know what, Adam, you're absolutely right. I was talking about their defense though, but yeah. they are a top team in the Eastern Conference. So that's because a whole other conversation score, altogether. They can, score, they can score 120 a game easily. Yeah. Uh, so thank yeah. you, HM, for the $2 donation. He said, what is the difference between Achua and Silva? I don't know. <laughs> Just being perfectly Draft honest. Draft capital. Their yeah. names. Yeah. that's They're even no, born on the same day. Like Silva's one, just three years older. <laughs> one of them has a cooler <laughs> Twitter bio. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to do this. We go. We gonna just go to the next game, bro. Cause this schedule, this does not get easier. We got Dame coming in next. <laughs> so, uh, simple. I'm gonna toss this to you. The boy feeling good about uh Dame coming in. The boy not feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction for next game, bro? Yeah, um, if I'm being honest, I'm feeling a loss, man. I'm feeling a loss. That'll be five in a row, Simba. Can it we will. take it? It will. But I'm feeling it. I don't. I don't know. I don't see it. I just don't see it happening. We're in a bad place right now, and there's, you know, they're obvious. There's, there's just not a lot going on. And, and it's, if they looked happy and they just looked like they were having bad, like you know, a bad slump, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, we definitely have a shot at this. But just everything about this Heat team right now looks horrible. And I don't think there's one fan. I don't think there's one fan that ever is like going to watch a game every night like this past week and is like, yeah, I can't wait to watch the Heat. It's kind of like, uh, let's see what happens tonight. You know, like there's no way you can feel good about this next game coming up. I mean, yeah. So I want to thank uh, the I want to thank Dan the Film Gent for five dollar dono. He says, so is it possible for another revenge game with Derek Jones Jr. on Thursday? Absolutely. I also want to thank uh, Shot Collar for the. 
for his basketball expertise and telling us that we are so clueless and don't know real ball. LMAO, y'all sound like uneducated clowns. We appreciate yeah, you but for you watching. Want- we appreciate yeah, you watching us. We, we appreciate <laughs> you for watching. Thank you for your support, and we hope that you continue to uh, support the Five Reasons Sports Network. So, thank you for all of that. Uh, so, Brian, is the boy feeling good about the game? Uh, Hell no. Brian? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like, first of all, I think half the team's going to be, or at least I'm hoping half the team is going to be gone. So they're going to lose just off the strength of that. But yeah, I just feel like Dame's going to have fifty. CJ's back, right? Is he not? He is. Okay. Yeah, I believe he is. He is. All right. Yeah. yeah. So he's probably going to have some crazy. I don't know. I, just, I have no faith in this team at this point unless big moves are made. But it is what it is. It's more of the same. Okay. Okay. Ariel, is the boy feeling good about his next game? Yes. I actually think that the Heat will be rejuvenated by certain things that may or may not go on revolving around the team's personnel. And we'll get a heroic effort from Bam and Jimmy because they're sick and tired of this shit. And they're going to get a W. You know what, Ariel? I knew it was a reason why you were one of my favorite people on Five Reasons Sports Network. Talk that shit, OG. Uh, So, Ricky. Yes, sir. Look what you just started, bro. I can't stop saying it now. Is the boy feeling good about (laughs) Portland? Uh, Honnêtement, notre équipe va perdre. We're going to lose. On va perdre. Uh (laughs) On va perdre. (laughs) <laughs> My, is, is that yeah, mean, it's gonna, yeah, uh, we're gonna lose and badly. It's okay. not gonna be. It's not gonna be fun. Cause look, it's Dame. You're talking about a guy. I mean, you know, I don't need. Do I need to? Does is an, is analysis even necessary? It's the Blazers. <laughs> not really. Like, <laughs> I mean, who's who's gonna guard them? We have I mean, problem guarding guards. They have two of the better scoring guards in the league. Like, it seems like the writing's on the wall, but continue if you want to make a point. Somebody said talk about Ariza. So, Ricky, if you want to talk about the game Ariza had tonight, because I thought he played okay. Like, Yeah, I, I mean, mean, he yeah, he, here's the thing. He was fine, but here's the thing. With Ariza, like 90% of this team, if you expect more than kind of like a bit performance, intangibles, your Battier type play, then you're going to be disappointed. If you expect uh, Duncan Robinson to be Gordon Hayward, you're going to be disappointed. If you just treat him as a spot shooter, as a Steve Kerr for the 98 Bulls, you'll be happy because that's what he knows how to do. I mean, Ariza is going to be – Ariza is best served on a on a good team. We saw that in Sacramento and then with Portland. His, th- his three-point shooting jumped by, I think, 10% from 39 to 49%. And if this team is good and gets the right players around them, he, he's going to be good. If not, then, well, I mean, it is what it is. So I want to thank SRT Dre for the 199 dunno. He's had a heroic effort from Bam. Laughable. You never know. Well, I mean, Bam yeah, is Bam, Bam can't Bam can't come out and just all of a sudden take over a game. He said, talk real basketball. Y'all just talking corny media stuff. It's clear that you don't understand plays and defensive sets. Thank you again, Shot Collar, for all of your support. We really appreciate you watching us on the Five Reasons Sports Network. We hope that you return next game and watch us again. But Simba, uh, when it comes to me in the next game, bro, you know how the boy feeling, Simba? Go ahead and tell the folks how the boy feeling. <laughs> the boy feeling good. You know it. We finna blow that shit out, bro. I'm sick of them doing it. We sick of them doing it. Oh, <laughs> so we go. We gonna win against Portland, man. Like I'm. I'm pretty sure, like it's gonna be a gutted effort. There are gonna be some guys pending a move. There are gonna be some guys who won't be able to play. Uh, so you know what I mean. I think the reserves or whoever's left on the roster are gonna w- want to prove. Are going to want to make a statement about how they're going to play moving forward for the rest of the season. So I'm confident in the team. I want them to do this uh, terribly because I do not like coming on here talking about them losing. So time to pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> Ricky, you pay Vertigear, bro. Vertigear. Okay. Yes, well. Okay. Y'all, y'all want Vertigear? Let me show you Vertigear. Vertigear oh. is uh, one of our official sponsors. They produce great gaming chairs. If you're like me, if you're a true, if you're a, you know, if you're a black king like myself, Royal and the Lord or Brian, whatever you want to call them, um, you're going to need a throne. Not only are you going to need a throne when you do streams and when you get, you know, when you get down, you got to be able to spin. You got to be able to spin. You got to be able to spin. You know why? When you spin, you stream with style. And not only is Vertigear fantastic with spinning, looking good, you know, making your butt feel nice and comfy. They're perfect for streaming, gaming, all of that. Now, 
Do I have the website in front of me at this moment? No, because I was caught off guard in doing this promo. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm a good, I'm a trooper. I'm going to go through with this. Go ahead and, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I think we have the website. Nope, that's something else. Um, the affiliate link will be in the description of this video. Yes, it will. So at the end of the day, look, if you click the affiliate, the affiliate link with five reasons, you're going to get a good discount on these chairs that are worth the price of admission. And as our partner in this network says, when you spin, you win. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. Yes. Yes. Can we, you all hear me? We call, Adam, we call him he who must not be named on this show. I don't, I don't know who that is. Um, oh, you, to, you, were spinning, yeah. you were spinning. You were spinning and winning. Oh, uh, spinning? Oh, okay. Spinning and winning, my yeah. brother. Beautiful. Um, by the way, here's the thing. Here's the thing. These chairs, guaranteed you won't say something racist. <laughs> guaranteed it's yeah. almost 100 sure that you would never uh so simba what's up you get miami grill because you got to eat them on a stream and i was, was super nice. jealous bro <laughs> <laughs> all right so the only thing better than cheering on your miami heat especially when we're losing is doing it with your favorite wings miami grills got you covered Bring home a platter of your faves to share for the game tonight. Uh, just like how you like them. Crispy grilled. You know, I like them naked. Some people like them boneless, but that's not really yeah, a wing. You do. Um, yes. <laughs> get them all soft uh, to perfection. With one of the three new sauces, mango habanero, honey garlic, or Nashville hot. If you can't decide, get them all delivered with a catering order. There's more than just wings, too. Order for the whole fam with cheesesteaks, euros, burgers, and more. Order online or in person. Pick, pick up drive through dine-in, and delivery available at all locations. Visit MyMiamiGrill.com for more details. Miami Grill, if you're craving it, they are making it. All right. My man. You know, Simba, when you talk about the wings, bro. You had that boy feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've i always... I, that's the stop every time I go home, bro. So, uh, Dan the Man asked in the comments, he said, am I hosting on Thursday? Uh, I'll be part of the hosting committee for the crossover event. Uh, you have the five on the floor, guys. They're going to start. Uh, so, Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m., we're going to have a trade deadline special. So, at 1 o'clock, from 1 to 2, you have the five on the floor, guys. Ethan J. Skolnick, Greg Silvander, Alex Toledo. They will be there from 1 to 2. From 2 to 2.30, they will be joined by our very own Adam Barat, a.k.a. Clutch. The man going to jump on there from 2 to 2.30. And then from 2.30 to like 3.30, the rest of the members of the Clutch Corner are going to go on there. And I think for a while, we're going to have a pretty big panel. I think it's like six people if I did my math correct. And I'm holding up a lot more fingers than six. <laughs> but uh, but it's going to be like six people. And we all y'all know what we're going to do. We're going to have a war out there. Six, seven people. I don't know how many. But is is Hoodie Maddie gonna be there? Not sure, but she should be. Mm. Thank you for the five dollar donor corpse. Um, but yeah, and then from three thirty to four, the Scott Force will be joining us. I think they're gonna pop in maybe a little earlier. That's that's gonna be contingent on how long we go with the clutch corner stuff, but they're gonna jump in too, give us their thoughts. Uh, and then we're gonna run you all the way through four o'clock. So we got one more uh, bill to pay, and that's the primary sponsor of this, Biscay Bay Brewing, and my guy. Brian is the king. Yep. Listen, Biscayne Bay Brewing is a locally owned independent brewery in the heart of Miami. Drinking is a cool effing thing to do, right? So why not do it with the coolest beer around, Biscay Bay Brewing, right? You can ask for it at restaurants. Um, you can find it in stores. You've got the pastime Pilsner, the Tropical Bay IPA, which looks beautiful, the Miami Pale Ale, and the Marlins Lager. Representing your favorite teams, your your favorite vibes of Miami. So invest in that vibe while getting responsibly drunk and get some Biscay and Bay Brewing. My man, so Ryan, that's that's I think that's one of your best ones yet. I'm just gonna be perfectly honest with you, brother. I'm I'm thoroughly impressed by that Biscay and Bay Brewing. It's come a long way. Look at thank, my, thank you. That was off the yeah. dome. I mean, so, that that is, that Look at the Scott Force paying the bills out here. Okay, so let's talk about some of the shows. Uh, since Gaz not here, Ariel, you get to do walkouts and knockouts, and you also get to do the shoot around. So go ahead and plug that for us. So the shoot around is a short video that Gad and I like to upload to the Twitter timeline. We'll do it in under 140 seconds. 
Um, we'll basically update you on the state of the heat, whatever might be hot in the rumor mill. We might talk about the game. We'll preview usually the game that will be had that night. So they'll drop on game day mornings, usually around 10 a.m. You can look at uh, either his timeline or my Twitter timeline. One of us will post it every game day morning. So that's the shoot around. And then we've got walkouts and knockouts, myself and uh, Jonathan Romlikon, uh from Five Reasons Sports. We do a UFC pre-fight preview show this weekend uh march what is the 27th this weekend yes the 27th uh saturday we've got a huge title fight in the heavyweight division stipe miocic one of the greatest fighters ever against francis Ngannou, a monster of a destroyer at heavyweight um you don't want to miss that so we'll get you all set for that we'll talk about everything on the main card we'll give you betting picks we'll give you parlays we'll give you all of that so Walkouts and knockouts Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Can I can I just jump in real quick with a testimony Please. with okay. regards to the shoot around? So here's what happened, right? The other day, I actually tuned into the shoot around with with Ariel and Gad. And I kid you not, I watched that and it gave me the confidence to uh, slide into the DMs of my crush. She said, yes, we've been married for seven years and have two children. <laughs> I'm so what, what a testimony <laughs> black I love i love it so it gave uh, me the confidence i needed to do what i needed to do in god's name we're just I'm trying mad. to make heat fans lives better that's all we try to do on the shooter <laughs> yes so one of the things that i'm going to start uh doing at the end of these shows is just start recognizing some of the people who catch my eye with the donations i'll do one a night uh just somebody it's going to be off the top of the head so if i don't get to you please don't think i'm forgetting about you i just want to shout out people who have been uh extremely giving of not only their time but their funds to help this show continue to grow so christian Curtis, you are my guy tonight you are always in here bro you're always donating always commenting we love having you here bro we appreciate oh. the sport so much uh i already told y'all the clutch corner is gonna be on thursday so uh thank you guys for that i also want to thank to my uh, also want to thank my guy what was his name Dan no, it's some killer. Dan the Gent. Thanks, Dan the Gent, too. Uh, what's his name? Kush Killer, the guy who was in there is killing us. To hell with you, bro. You'll be back next show to watch us again. See you tomorrow. That boy feel like it. Peace. I think we're still alive. We are. <laughs> I'm still dancing. Play the video, Manny. Come on. <laughs> Manny not here. Alejandro. Play the video, Alejandro. No, my bad. Go ahead. Escape me, Alejandro. Trade the kids. I think he's at the beach in the speedo. Right,